you keep hoping that the next time you try to sell a piece, it's going to be better. It just, it just isn't. So it's just I like, would ask you that question going. again, Keith. I'm here at Keith uh, Ramsey's art show here. He's got some spectacular <laughs> pieces, man. He's getting ready. To, he, he's going out of this city, man, to, to, to show some people, to do some things. Um, I think he's, you're going to Florida, right? Yeah, trying to get the work down to Florida. Tell us what you got going on today, bro. Ah, today, I got the Too Big to Fail art sale over at the studio. I got Cityscapes and Noir paintings over here, kind of a signature series for me. I have small works down here, small sculptural pieces, um, which is a new thing, basically uh, about a year in the making, and I love doing these pieces. These pieces are so fun and so exciting to find and, and, and create. And, um, have this is the railroad spike right here? Yeah, that's railroad spikes. Oh my god. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Railroad spikes and everything, and the spikes are naturally bent and worn that way, and mm -hmm. that's what makes them interesting to me. Then you got some found punk down there, pencil holders and, and holders and stuff like that from antiques. So what about this piece here, Keith? Uh, which one? It's, uh, it's gorgeous. Look like a telephone booth. Oh, not. <laughs> <laughs> No, that um that box, I've had that box for years. And then I found this um this um uh drill press. It's like it's a vintage antique drill press I bought from an antique shop and I decided to make uh kind of like a shelf for it. So I used the box connected to the drill drill press and, and weighted exactly the way it needed to be and made it stable and then lined it with antique newspapers from like nineteen thirties to nineteen forties. And that gives it another uh, another aspect of being an antique. It's a, it's a great, interesting liner, you know, just movie posters and stuff like that. So it just makes it interesting all the way around. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I've, I've never seen anything like your work. I've seen um, work, um, you know, what do you call it, steampunk? Yeah, steampunk. I've seen that, mm -hmm. yeah, but, um, but this is, I, I love your style. Yeah, I started off with steampunk and... I decided that I didn't want to just create something and put gears on it to make it look like a certain aesthetic of steampunk. Oh, mm -hmm. it has to have gears on it to have that kind of aesthetic. Sure. I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to, to see what the natural look was going to be and create that by using found objects. That's why I came up with found punk. Right, right. Taking, I was going to ask you about found that. found objects and, and doing it in the, in the inspirational style of steampunk and having the whole mentality of I don't need to go buy a shelf. Mm -hmm. I want to make my shelf. And that's where it comes from. So a lot of things I do with this, the found punk stuff is stuff that I need at the house or something like that or just something I just I want, you know. Like this right here, this piece right here. Mm -hmm. This is my wine cabinet. What? I created it here. specifically for the fact that I needed a place to put my wines. Wow. And I lined it with... Surprise, with, uh, surprise. Camp with uh, burlap sacks from uh, coffee shops, from um, coffee shops around town. So the big question is: Is not that wine open yet? <laughs> nah, nah. All these are fake me outs. I mean, okay. except for except for this one. This one has wine in it, but it's a cheap like three dollar wine. Wow, well, your own label, huh? Yeah. Well, I did this years ago, just God. because I uh, did that years ago. Because is, is I, it in the market? Is it in the store? Can we get somebody? Nah, nah <laughs> this, is, this is BS. It's just a prop, uh, basically. But I had a, a show at a winery. And uh, I was like, well, what do you do? I was like, I don't want to just have, like, you know, a piece of paper out on the table. I was like, why not put my logo on a bottle of wine mm -hmm. so people are drinking, you know, with the glass. They can pick this up and read my artist statement. Yeah, sure. You know? And so it just made sense. It just made sense. So so how did you get into um, into this style of work? What, 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 um, uh, how did it start? At my job. Um, we got a, a client that wanted steampunk. I was walking by one of my coworkers' desks. Mm -hmm. And he had it up on his computer. And he was like, I walked by and was like, whoa, what is that? He was like, this is steampunk. And he just introduced me to it. And like a lot of people would tell you, it's like they didn't know what it was called, but they knew what it what it li what they liked. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always collected antiques. And I've always been interested in, in machinery and stuff like that, and antiques and cars, and especially steam locomotives and stuff. And then once they showed me that, I was like, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Steampunk. Holy shit, that's it. And um, and so that's what that what drew me to it. And I just started looking at it and looking at it and looking at it. And just it just built up. And that's what I just started wanting to. 
I was like, why not me? Why mm-hmm. not? I, why can't I do that? And so that's what I started doing. And it just opened up a whole new world for me. I love that hat you made, man. Uh, oh, yeah. And the, the mask you made was like crazy. Yeah. See, I love doing costuming, too, because it's, it's like it puts it out there, you know? Yeah. And it has a certain certain aesthetic. People look at it be like, oh, it's steampunk. It's like, yeah, I'm dressed as steampunk, but my work is found. You, you like me. I, I don't know what the same term or not, but I, I like, um, what do you call it when you, it's like, um, uh, dressing up um, costumes. Costuming, yeah. Yeah, cost- I love yeah. it, man. Halloween, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah, let's just go out and, and yeah, just, just it's, do something, it's like, man. It's like, why not? Let me be something else for a minute, you know? Yeah. And so that's what, that's, what, that's what I love to do. And, and, you know, doing this kind of work, doing my table here, I needed the table. I had the milk jug. And I was like, well, what can I do with that? So I just took it and found objects in the back of my yard. And but it's a milk jug? Yeah, it's an antique wow. milk drug jug. I've had it for, I mean, stuff I've had for years, it just became something else, you know? Mm-hmm. And there's auto parts and stuff inside there. And I love, the best part about doing this kind of stuff is the problem solving. Yeah. How do you, how do you make this ground glass table sit on top of here? How do you, where do you go to find the parts for that? Because you can right, cut see. it and stuff. So you just like, you make these. You clamp it inside there mm-hmm. and it holds it as a table. Wow. Problem solving. You know, I love that stuff. So, Keith, tell me about uh, about your paintings here. You got got a lot of these things going on. Yeah, those are cityscapes. You know, I've been working with those. Um, that you said series cityscapes? For years. Yeah. Work, it's an abstraction of a, of a cityscape because all you see is like the wall, the side of the wall, as if you're following this character throughout their journey. Right, right. That's what I love about it. And who is mm-hmm. this character, man? I, yeah, I, this character is me. It's ooh, you. Okay, okay. It's whoever buys got it. you. With this series, with these pieces right here specifically, I, I untitled them so that if a person buys them, they can actually name it themselves mm-hmm. and then let me know what the name is and I'll record it. And they can put it on Facebook and stuff like that, but that gives them an extra layer of ownership. Okay, I bought this piece and it's named this and it means more to them if they title it than if I title it. Mm-hmm. And so it's, a, I mean, these things have been moving a little bit, too. I'm, I'm happy about $45, that. $45, man, is more than reasonable. Yeah, but see, you know, these are all color sketches. These are mm. all, this is this is an artist practicing. Sure. Gotcha, because gotcha. I, I'm using different palettes and stuff and be, not having to worry about, you know, or think about I'm going to complete this piece or this is going to be a completed piece. You just kind of, I want to throw this color down. What is this color? Let me mix this color. Throw it in there and then. Go to it and, and find out what else could happen inside there. What other colors can come out of it, and it just frees you up to be able to study like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Now the, um, the the bands here, which is my favorite. The wristbands. Yeah, this yeah, is my favorite. Antique here. newspapers from uh, 1934 to about 1964. This is the typography that they used in the advertisement that made it so interesting. Plus the color of it when it ages, you get that that kind of beige color to it. And it really matches that that real leather really nicely. And so those those are real fun to do. And those right there are just the sizes. Mm-hmm. But just to make it interesting, I just I did the size. You know, you could try your size in the same same kind of way. I noticed this piece here. I see um, is this banister railing. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. See, this piece is different because I started off on black. And mm-hmm. I chipped away, I kind of chipped away at the black and kind of sculpted the color in, into the black. And so that's where you're getting this different kind of uh, texture and stuff like that. And I made it more painterly, used more obvious brush strokes and stuff like that. So that was really a fun piece. And I need to go back to try to do those. Because most of the time I'll layer a color onto it. But this started off as black and I just painted around the black the way I wanted it to come out. And this one's like a basketball court, or nah, like, um, what is that? It's a road sign. It's, road called, oh, it's called Route. Ooh. Right, right. And it's just like it's a it's kind of homage to Route One, because mm-hmm. I used to travel that and look for antiques and stuff like that. And you see these old signs and stuff when the building isn't there anymore, but you see these old road signs from from back when that was the main through fair. Wow, I see the road in there, man. Mm-hmm. And that the guy, that's the guy. That's it. There he is. Is he traveling to it or from it? I mean, yeah. That's that's the ambigu- ambiguity of. This, these pieces, and I'm glad you said that word because yeah, I don't it all try, up. Hey, try, try again, again, try again, twice. Try and say, say it again. <laughs> Ambiguity. Ambiguity. Okay. Ambiguity. Yeah. I hope that's right. And then I noticed um, you got machinery. I, I love yeah, what you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is the um, the the pipe dream series. Mm-hmm. And you know the um, the whole thing about pipe dream is imagine if our largest industries made profit by helping the earth instead of harming her. Mm-hmm. 
is like, you know, you have this raw metallic machinery that has no life cranking out life, cranking out wow. you yeah. know, something beautiful instead of filth into the sky. And so that's the whole concept behind that. Awesome. Well, I'm here with Keith Ramsey. It's a gorgeous day. A little clouded, but still, it feels good yeah, I, just I, to be I, out I've here. I've been trapped in here the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is this is awesome, man. So, so what what's your plan for the future, Keith? We'll see what happens. <laughs> My we'll man, see what happens. I mean, you you never know until you get there, right? You never know until you get there. Well said. This is so sick. James Thornhill, Keith Ramsey. Peace yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>